Hi there, welcome back to Retro Evolutions. Thanks for stopping by again. Now, I'd just like to take a quick minute to thank all of the people who've been involved in the show along the way. We've just hit 500 subscribers, and you all know who you are. So this is just a quick thank you to all of you. Anyway, without carrying on too much, let's get straight into the show as we carry on with the Consolized Atari Lynx Part 3. I have a little brief history update from my friend Ian, the historic nerd. Thanks, guys. In 1989, Atari dazzled the gaming industry with a handheld device that was not only in full color, but was also a true 16-bit system. However, this device wasn't originally Atari's. The Lynx, as it became called, was originally developed by two Amiga designers, RJ McCall and Dave Needle. David Morse, a former manager at Amiga, asked the two designers if they could develop a handheld gaming system for a company called Epix. Epix had exclusively been a software developer, but attempted to break into the lucrative hardware market around 1986. Mikkel and Needle managed to have the Lynx done and developed by 1987, with the initial device being labeled the Handy Game. The Handy Game was shown at Winter CES, the Consumer Electronics Show in 1989. The aggressive shift in Epic's business model to hardware development resulted in considerable stress on the small company, which forced Epix to look for partners on the project. Epix approached Nintendo and even Sega with their innovative handheld, but was rejected by the two companies. Epix ended up with Atari and Epic signed on to primarily make software for the handheld, with Atari doing most of the heavy lifting, and Atari agreeing to handle production and even market the device. However, Epic's financial issues of shifting to very expensive hardware development had practically bankrupted the company, and because the deal with Atari stipulated that Epic's would make software and finish development on the handheld accessories as a milestone for payments, Atari didn't pay, and Atari used Epic's default as an excuse to buy up the company's assets. The Atari Lynx went on to dazzle many in its initial showing, and had a strong first year selling around 500,000 units. However, the Lynx's success didn't last. The Lynx's steep launch price of $179 made it a tough buy, and Nintendo launched their own handheld in 1989. And despite the Game Boy's inferiority to the Lynx, it sold incredibly well at its price point of $89.99, derailing much of the Lynx's momentum. The Lynx suffered another hit to sales, when Sega launched their Game Gear in 91, at a price point of $149, as another rival color screen handheld. The Lynx was truly an innovative handheld for the time. It offered considerably advanced gameplay that rivaled even home consoles of the period, but a number of factors were against it, and it never quite got to the same fame as the Game Boy. But it has, however, been cemented as a cult classic system. I'm the Historic Nerd, and this is the Consolized Atari Lynx Part 3 by Retro Revolutions. So Jared, here's my challenge. I've seen some of the fantastic consoleized systems you've done already, so I want to see how you go at expanding the Atari console family by creating the Lynx home console that never was. So welcome back. If you joined us the last two parts for this before we're at where we are now, uh, we basically took the screen off, gave ourselves some video output, made ourselves a controller and pinned it all out. We also have a little harness here for the controller and a video out cable. So now what's left to do is a permanent power supply. We'll take this off, pin out the power so that we have a plug-in console. Uh, Aaron from Press Play and Tape Podcast, he wants to have the link feature available, so we'll put that outside the console as well. And we're going to have to pin out option one and option two. Now, I've already brought the wires to the controller, but we're going to have to make physical buttons for those, which is what I was referring to if you've seen when I was talking about it won't resemble an NES controller at all when it's finished. Right, the last part is the on and off switch and the volume and the brightness adjustment, we're going to pin those all out and then that should complete the build. Uh, barring any problems, we should be straightforward from here out. So get ready for the tidbit stuff and we'll get straight into it. So 
So what we have here is the controller that we're going to have to have the options 1 and 2 on. Now the reason for that is so you can have a reset and a screen flip, uh, which is requested from him. So we've got a little hole of pre-drilled here. I'll show it in the building process what we do. But that is where our third button is going to come through. Uh, and then the wires from episode 1, the option 1 and option 2. Option 2 will go into here and option 1 will go into the select. <laughs> So we're going to take out the comms links now, disconnect the power supply and possibly the audio. I'm not sure how we're going to work that one out yet. We may come straight off the speaker port or straight off here. Anyway, let's get desoldering.
Okay, so now we have to be able to power this thing on and off from the uh, front of the device. So it's going to have to have an external switch. Now this is quite important because this one here actually holds it a signal down all the time. For power off and on. So we're going to have to run three wires in and this will be routed to the front of the machine.
very fantastic and uh, hypnotic field. Uh, once you start, you just can't stop. It, it's, it's something you can't explain. To the question of, uh, you know, what, what is all this microcomputer and computer business going to do to our society? The case is that we are humans and we are much more adaptable to, to our environment than the computer is to its own. If you look at society as simply the collective contribution of millions of human beings who carry in themselves certain power and influence and emotion, and every time you, you turn the switch off of one of those persons, you've dampened the glow. So there you have it, the console asked Atari Lynx. And I'd love to just take a quick second to thank all the people who were involved in helping make this come true. Uh, Extreme Consoles and Neon Vision, and Oz Retro Gamer and Press Play and Tape Podcast and, uh, for pushing me to get this done for you guys. I think you can understand why it took so long now. So thank you very much and we'll see you next time. I'm on